Hi, everybody, and welcome to The Investigation. Today, we are going to be talking about something we can't live without, but in reality, people don't know that much about it. Water. Um, however, unlike last episode where we just kind of, you know, discussed our experiences, we actually have someone today who is an expert on the topic of water. Today, we're joined by Professor Mark Giordano. He is the Director of Science, Technology, and International Affairs at Georgetown University, uh, which is coincidentally very funny, as that's Robert's major, so we're uh, <laughs> hoping he doesn't make too much of a fool. A lot of things riding on today. Yeah, yeah, let's hope he doesn't make too much of a fool. Professor Giordano's uh, research focuses on uh, natural resource issues, particularly in Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa, right? And um, <laughs> he's a member of the Georgetown Environmental Institute, and before coming to Georgetown, he was director of the International Water Management Institute? No, a director. A director. There's a couple of them. <laughs> and this one's my favorite. Uh, he was the winner of the 2012 Stockholm Water Prize, which is one of the coolest titles, the or accolades ever. Another clarification. The organization got the water prize. I was just part of it. Well, oh, still. don't let the truth get in the way of any yeah, story. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> no one would have known. No one would have known. Um, so before we get into things, I just think it would be kind of a good stage setter to ask these guys a couple questions about uh, water just because, you know, it's so important for all of us. Uh, and yet we're being put to the test. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So Sam and Robert, how much does an average, average toilet use per flush? Nine liters. I, I have 1.5 gallons. I have it in gallons. Ooh, gallons versus liters. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, I don't know the conversion. All right, what is it? Yeah, it's one to two gallons. However, it used to be more. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's a whole nother topic that we'll get into, but uh, old appliances used to waste a ton, tons of water. Um, Can I ask one too? Yes. Go. If you want to have one kilo of grain, how much water does it take to grow it? I know this. <laughs> 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 I heard this recently. I want to say like... Thousand liters exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that experiment went horribly wrong. They yeah. got them both right. I don't know where I learned that recently, but it was literally like within two weeks or something. Maybe you were reading my stuff. Yeah, Maybe. oh, absolutely. Exactly. I actually yeah. know it was that, so yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so first of all, just to get things started, there's some facts that I think are pretty important for this discussion. Is the quiz or is the quiz yeah, over? Yeah, quiz is over. Up? They got them both okay. right. Which I'd actually like to start things okay. off a little with a little. T Everyone, cheers Cheers with our tap water. This is DC tap water. I just filled it up from the sink, the kitchen sink, actually. I thought DC tap water it's was actually really high quality. It's only tap water. Yeah. There's, I promise there's nothing else in this but tap water. Okay. Okay, now, Professor Giordano, was that ever in a toilet? Could have been. What are the poss what's, what's the probability? Because... It does get it gets reused, right? What happens when you flush a toilet? <coughs> you go here, it goes into a wastewater to some pipes, it ends up in a wastewater treatment center, and then we treat it and we stick it back in the Potomac River. And this water came out of the Potomac River. Oh, so, so, so there you go. <laughs> may have already yeah, so drank. Don't it, swim in the Potomac it, River. Clean um, it and put it back. Oh. Wow. So uh, we were actually going up on with that. Yeah, I, mean, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know what that says about me, but I'm completely. But I okay think a lot of people I'm don't awesome realize mind. that. Yeah. I knew that from our preliminary w when I first talked yeah. to you. But a lot of people don't realize that. I think that they. D I mean, we were talking. The the this is hilarious. The whole reason is this whole water plant that takes the sewage water, filters it out, and then puts it back in the Potomac, which is one step away from, and then. Another plant takes Potomac water, filters it for drinking water. And w I was like, why doesn't the same plant do it? And it's a big reason because people can't yet get past the idea that they are taking water from the same place that also filters sewage water. Even though it's just a little <laughs> bit farther down the line, <laughs> which is hilarious. So, like, so are, there, are, there, are there a lot of like uh, metropolitan areas that don't do this simply because of the negative sentiment of, of the idea. I don't think so. I don't think anybody's aware. The only ones that don't do it, they're <laughs> pumping groundwater. Okay. Oh. But mo especially Eastern US, it's almost all coming out of rivers. So uh, what's the impact it has on like the quantity of water in that body of water that's coming from at any one time? Generally not much. Actually, drinking water is, that's why I asked the 
how much water goes into your wheat. Yeah. That's where the main quantity is. Gotcha, gotcha, way, gotcha. Way, way, 90 something percent is agriculture and 5% might be drinking water. Is it, uh, that's like. So that's the problem on water scarcity. Is that water waste? What do you mean? Like, so, so water, five percent of water waste is from drinking water. And no, five percent of water consumption okay. is drinking water. Oh, what's the water waste percentage? From it, like it depends what you mean because so we drink the water and then afterwards we're gonna go pee and it's gonna go in the toilet and then it's gonna get clean, cleaned at the Blue Plains wastewater treatment plant and then they're gonna put it back in the river. Wow. So okay. it get it it'll be recycled. Yeah. But so it was, it goes back in the so, river. but the are water we ever wasting? What's water waste? No, because well, we I listened to a recording of them talking to get some and read some of his uh, presentations to prepare myself for this uh, to topic. Jack, so Jack, Jack is the only one out of the three of us mm. co-hosts that is scared prepared. of looking like an idiot. Is it, no, <laughs> it, yeah, it yeah. does the does data research. So yeah. Sam and I are in the dark, but Jack, go ahead. Yeah, no, just that. As you were talking about, most of the water we use goes towards agriculture, and that water uh, is not recycled in the same way. Right. That Yeah. So I'm going to let him talk about it because, yeah. So I wouldn't call it waste. So when you grow a plant, the plant has to have water to grow to – that's the process. Yeah. It turns into <laughs> a vapor. <laughs> that's how plants so grow. So it's not <laughs> wasting it. It's what it's needed. But when you drink water, y your body just evaporates a little bit of it. Most of it you pee back out. So the use in agriculture is because the, all of it's turning into vapor and going back up into the atmosphere. So this whole idea of like, you know, the way the media or whoever you want to call it creates hysteria about us running out of water. At what point in the water cycle, whether it's agriculture, whether it's drinking, flushing toilets, having too long a showers in the morning, at what point are we actually losing water out of the system? Are we ever losing water out of the system? Yeah, so I think it's not quite so straightforward, is it? Yeah. So part of it, when there's a talk about there's, we're running out of water, it's usually focused on then the restaurant doesn't give you free water anymore or something like that in California. Where yeah. Like, well, most of the water is going to agriculture, and this has very little to do with it. But... That's so crazy. Whenever <laughs> I think of, like, like, we need to reduce our water usage, it's always like, oh, I'll take shorter showers, like... Yeah. So is that not somewhere really there's a dam no. that's getting lower so and it's not getting it filled back yeah. up soon. I'm worried about it. <laughs> but, but the other, it's, it depends where you're talking about. So if you're a city, if you're San Diego that's running out of water, you only get so pull much the, water pull allocation the, yeah, just so from, the, from the state. So from your perspective, you've got to somehow get more water so you can have it for drinking and watering lawns and all of that stuff. But in some other part of the state may have way more water than you do and be w using way more in agriculture. But So you might want to say it because you only have so much to use. But the other part is there's a lot of energy that goes into cleaning the water, that goes into moving oh, the water yeah. around because water is super heavy. So this Explain that a little bit more. No, that's actually one of the most interesting things <laughs> I read from his stuff is that it's like or wildly impractical to pump water uphill because water is so heavy. So the location of all these things is super important negotiating how uh, the water system of yeah. various... How much systems. does like water weight affect how we do things? A lot. So... I don't, I don't know the, I don't know if we're metric or what, but a cubic meter of water <laughs> weighs a thousand kilos. So if you want to move that up just a bit, that takes a huge amount yeah. of energy. Or if it's already up, you can make a dam and have hydropower. So that's why it works. There's oh, I feel like I'm stupid for not figuring that <laughs> out by now. But like, <laughs> that I literally oh. just thought of Light that. Bulb. Yeah, <laughs> the thing. Huh. Well. Okay. So 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 yeah, so when it comes to like a, a township that is running out of water, say California, for example, yeah. because they're growing nuts <coughs> because the Chinese middle class want it. I think, that's what I understand. Okay. But, so I it's not so right. much really that, that there is- Oddly specific. Yeah, I yeah. really <laughs> hope that's right. It's not so much that there's not enough water in the system. It is a matter of the people in this region are using water faster than the water that's in the system is coming back to this region. Yes. Okay. So they're not running out of water. It's about how do we just how do we how do we fairly and equally distribute the finite amount of right. water that's always going to be there to the parts of the world that need it when they need it. Something like that. So in one year, there's so much water in the system from how much rainfall there is and how much groundwater there already was. Mm. So you're limited to sort of what you have in a year. <coughs> so then the question is, how are you using it in that particular place? Yeah. So what keeps you up at night when it comes to water, <laughs> if anything? 
Uh, well, wait, I have a very basic... Uh, just to understand... That. that is a good question, I, I, though, yeah. if you need to get back to I have that. An, I have point. an extremely basic question to understand, like... It is the if you took all the water that we have today, mm-hmm. is that equal to all the water that in and ice that we had, like billions of years ago on this Earth? Or I, I think so. Okay, so it, that's not it's exactly my area of expertise. Mo- <laughs> okay, I, 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 yeah. don't, I think the amount there is there is. Balance calculation. Okay. Yes. <laughs> all right. So back to okay. Yeah. So it's it's really just a matter of like where it is. Yeah. Where and when. Yeah. Ooh. Oh gosh. Oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, go. But yeah, back to my question. <laughs> what keeps you up at night when it comes to water? So you, uh, nothing in particular. Yeah. So many small things. <laughs> but there's people talk about a global water problem, which I don't think there is. You have lots of smaller problems that deal, that have to do with the specifics of that particular location. Mm. In some places, it's because you have too much. In some places, it's because you have too little. In some places, it's because it didn't arrive at the right time. In some places, it's because the quality is bad. Yeah, so. So it depends. So it it, it's highly, there it's isn't so a global crazy. water problem. There's lots of smaller ones that need some. Interesting. So it's just like a distribution problem, essentially. Yeah. So it s- could be is it way, because our, it, like I probably wouldn't. Is it because population has gotten to a point where, like, we can run out of water in a region that that's not, like, yeah, I think is that's that big, it? That's a big pr- the pr- So one, one of the things, okay, there's no price on water generally. Or it's very low, so you don't even think about Unless it. you're at a Yankee game and so it's Yan- $10 yeah. dollars a water bottle. <laughs> so so you, don't, you don't really think about the value of the water, and we just use it that way. And only recently there's been enough growth and demand that suddenly there are trade-offs, and you can see that you're overusing it or there's not as much as you want. So we've gone from we don't even care what the price is to, okay, there's some kind of scarcity. So that, that, but that means we don't have any way to allocate it very well. Because there mm. is no price, and if you talk about oh. prices, that brings up all sorts of issues about equity and whose water is it. And because water, so if I drink the water now, so oh. it was the in the Potomac River, yeah, and now DC Water got it, and and so then was it their water, and now I drank it, so now is it my water, and then I'm going <laughs> to pee it out, and it's going to go back in the river. So whose water is it then? So if you're going to give <laughs> if you're going to give yeah. a water right, it's not simple. So well, that uh, I know Jack's itching to ask a question, but I'm just gonna ask, I'm just gonna go on this for a second. No, no, no. So keep going. If we, I mean, okay, it sounds like a horrendous reality in which you commoditize water to the point yeah. that like <laughs> that happens. Yeah, that's but terrifying. It sounds like, unless I completely misunderstood everything you just said, <laughs> that commoditizing water in some aspects is the solution to better distribution. Because if people can figure out how to make a business model or something out of distribution it's probably going to result in a more organized, for lack of a better term, distribution. Yeah, I wouldn't really put it as distribution because it's not so much that you want to move water around Yeah. because it's expensive to move it around because it's really heavy. Yeah. So it's how do people have access to it for whatever w- use they want to put it to and then often it's moving the thing around. So we want drinking water where we want it, but you want the water that goes into agriculture out in the field and then you're going to move the crop, not the water. Jeez. Wow. This is crazy. Wow. And then, well, what blows my mind, especially right now, is then it evaporates, gets turns into a cloud, and then just sends to another yeah. place. Like, could be how how do you know like <laughs> how <laughs> how far water can travel in cloud form before it drops again? Or uh, no, okay. yeah. people yeah. know it's known, but probably it is known. It is known. Someone, yeah. someone, someone knows. knows. Yeah, I don't know, but. It, Definitely, like Who's countries, difference yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for sure. Yeah, Cla- they move fast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> them clouds. Ever look up there? <laughs> um, so I just want to, I guess, shift the topic a little. And first of all, I basically all the data I'm using is from either water.org, which everyone should check out. It's like a uh, found. It's you Matt Damon. Really? <laughs> oh well, Matt Damon. <laughs> shameless plug for your <laughs> charity. Um, but they're they're doing a ton of really good work to try and provide more drinking water for people. Um, 80, 844 million people do not have access to safe drinking water, and 2.3 billion people are living without access to uh, uh, like what we would consider f- decent sanitation. So, I guess bringing it back to like us, how like what is the difference be- d- between what we would consider like good drinking water? And the water, I don't know, that you can drink. Because, like, I don't know. 
cavemen just drank the water right out of the stream and didn't care too much about it. But I mean, I feel today everyone's so particular about the flavor of their water or whatever. Who are you hanging out with? No, I'm <laughs> just like, have you ever been to the beach? And the beach is, you get there and you're like, oh my God, this beach water is so bad. I, I will say, I, kn- I know people that are particularly pr- proud of their certain tap water. People get like, exactly. really New territorial exactly. about it. Exactly. exactly, that's yeah. what I mean. New Yorkers claim they can taste the difference. Yeah. I can't. Well, I, mean, I go so far to say that. The water, the taste of the difference, the difference of the taste in water is what makes their pizza so good. No, 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 actually, yeah, I was about to say. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Not, oh not, to, yeah. My no, no, that is, I sw- th- I've heard this, yeah. and I, I fully believe it, that it's because they use water in their dough, and they get their water from uh, some, some canal or lake or whatever, and <laughs> it's, it's like special, <laughs> it's special water. It's called extra mm-hmm. sediment from old pipes, I reckon. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't buy it. Gives it a real robustness Any, with the dough. <laughs> anyway, yeah, what is the, the difference? I mean, it's it really easy to treat water. Yeah. And it's also really easy to contaminate water. So, like, in the one part of it's the biological part. So, we don't want sewage in our water because that That's makes gross. Sense. Yeah. But it's actually pretty easy to treat. So, our water here is easily treated with a few chemicals like chlorine. So it's just a, a simple treatment, yeah. same technology we've had for 100 years. It's not a big deal. There are other water issues where it's uh, heavy metals and things like that in the water that are difficult to, uh-huh. to treat. Um, I had a follow-up point, but I forgot what it was. Uh, well, just no. go, I want to jump into this quickly. Um, um, so a lot of our listeners are students, and a lot of students travel overseas, yeah. and there's like a plethora of products coming onto the market, like straws that you can yeah. like stick in a pond and filter the water and drink yeah. out of, or a water bottle that filters the process. Does that shit work? Yeah. How, how does it work? And why, if I'm going to India and I've got three weeks in India and if I drink bad water, I'm going to get the shits for three weeks. <laughs> why would I trust right. one of those, why would I trust one of those products? What are you trusting instead? Bottled yeah. water. How do you know? Yeah, yeah. good point. <laughs> really good point. No, because, the mo- I mean, you c- so people use them here for backpacking. Yeah. Too. It, there's simple filters. People, they, they work. They do work. They work, yeah. They work. They're different for they're different levels of what you're cutting out and yeah. But for the biological stuff, they work easily. I was thinking of this just the other day. Um, so you take tap water, which is fully filtered. Then people all the rage is getting a Brita to filter it one more time, but no one knows a how filtered their tap water is or b like how much more a Brita filters it. Like uh, oh, no one really me. knows that. I, like, I twenty dollars a I, bu- I bought a <laughs> is, I bought a Brita. A di- I bought a Brita because everyone has them. Literally. Does it, that make it a difference? It could be a complete placebo, and I completely yeah. believe uh, I, that Brita water is like. I think the only reason it makes a difference is because the tap water still has the chlorine in it. You can still taste it. Some from the Brita. Chlorine filter. or fluoride? Fluoride. Well, we we add the <laughs> fluoride on purpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, the the chlorine is there to kill the biological stuff, and mm. there's still a f- the same stuff you put in your swimming pool that we've yeah. done forever. I, I mean that taste doesn't. Some people don't want to like it, so the Brita filter will get rid of that. So is that I, I'm bad? not concerned about the tap. Water. Is it bad to be drinking chlorine? No, we've been drinking it a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I learned uh, so I learned recently that like the people that, um, and this is like not related to this podcast. This was like a random fact that I learned from a random person. <laughs> That um, <laughs> the water treatment facility in DC actually spends a lot of money with putting fluoride in the water, and so it kind of pisses them off when they hit find that people are actually filtering yeah. it because they're like, we spend so much money to put fluoride in the water <laughs> so that people in DC have whiter <laughs> and stronger teeth. Does that fluoride actually do that? Is that actually a genuine thing? And yeah, it, yeah, do yeah. you filter your water? Just for at home? just for all our listeners, fluoride is fluoride. <laughs> what is it? Fluoride. <laughs> How do you spell it? Uh, I Fluoride. Yeah, yeah. Fluoride. <laughs> fine. fine. Uh, however, many kids pronounce it. Okay, uh, you know what I'm getting at. Yeah. <laughs> no, we put it in because it makes your teeth better. Yeah. Do you know? Thing. I've Actually, heard you don't want to take it out. So, so do you filter serious. your water at home? Yeah. Yes, but the only reason is because I think it tastes better after the. the so, so it wait. doesn't take the fluoride out the filter. Actually, right. I don't know. I didn't put the filter in myself. My wife did. So <laughs> I, don't, I don't know which filter we actually have. So okay. Call her up. But it's not. <laughs> a, it's Get not her a, on the phone now. Yeah. <laughs> no, wait. Yeah. Can I go back to one thing? Yeah, so this yes. question of the like, how many people don't have access to safe drinking water and how many people don't have access to good sewage, I just want to highlight, like, since agriculture uses all the water, drinking water, it's, it's a small quantity. The issue is usually not the water. It's the money to put the pipes in, it's the money to put the system in, it's the political will to do that. So it's not but really... But is it already in? 
most places. Okay. So all, all the places over the world, yeah. 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 Uh, it's not there. And that is so it's framed as a water problem, but it's really a political will problem. Yeah. It's an infrastructure problem. It's an infrastructure problem. Ah. Plenty of water for drinking. There's, you know, it's hard to find a, you can find some <coughs> scenario where somebody, or physically there's not enough water to drink, but that's the minority case. So, so uh, private investors around the world who are investing in water, are they investing in water or are they investing in infrastructure companies that are focusing on delivering water to droughts to places? If you buy some mutual fund that focus is labels itself as water, it'll be infrastructure. Really? It'll be mostly oh, yeah. infrastructure. Yeah. Hey, there you go. Oh, okay. okay. That's wildly interest- interesting. Do I you think understand that? You seem yeah. No, like no, no, that no, seemed, no, like, no, I that seemed like a fake I was not sold, yeah. That was like, I don't really know what's going on, but I'm going to pretend I know what's going on. No, 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 because you, uh, Sam is our huge movie expert here, and you had said somehow at the part that no one watches at the end of The Big Short, or actually it, a lot of people watch it. I, I do enjoy those parts. A few people, yeah. But uh, what did it say? Like the like the one guy that figured out that you know there was this huge problem in Wall Street and bet against everyone and like in two thousand eight in two thousand eight and it, you know he was right obviously things went to shit and he shorted it all so he made money on things They'd going to it. shit. Yeah. yeah. He now what what what's he so he now like, only invests in water. Yeah, so, so the, the one guy who basically saw that the world was going to hell in a handbasket <laughs> in the two thousand and eight uh, global financial crisis, who figured out the American housing market was fucked, for lack of a better term. Now that he got out of investing because he got so screwed by his investors and they treated him so poorly and he basically lost his spirit for it, the only thing he invests in these days is water. And I thought that meant. He was backing like <laughs> rich people who were buying up fresh water sources <laughs> on the yeah. idea that if water runs out soon, they can hold everyone else like, around. Oh, <laughs> yeah. But no he's, actually you, yeah, no, no, actually, no, actually, he's investing in investing in infrastructure. No, he was talking about actual water. Oh, no. Oh, okay. He wasn't oh, about no, no, we're fucked. We're, uh, <laughs> no, so he's a bad guy after all. <laughs> yeah. Well, so because the issue is in Western United States, yep. the water rights go with, you get a right to use water by using the water. So it's basically the first user has a right to keep using the water, but they can only keep using the water as long as they keep using it for the original purpose. That's the way it was set no up. No way. So the that idea was w- oh the God. idea was from long ago, from the <laughs> late. Such a stupid country <laughs> that we keep these stupid rules. Yeah, sometimes. So he was like, "Well, you so you need water for your mine in the Western U.S. Mm-hmm. And if you stop mining, then you don't need it. So you put it back, and somebody you're not using it, so somebody else can get it. But that's still in place. But it means now <laughs> you if you can't what? transfer the water to somebody else." If they're going to change the use, so it makes it really hard to do the. So, so is cities have huge demand, but they can't get more water because it's tr- locked in agriculture, and agriculture is not going to stop using it because if they stop using it, they lose the right to it. So why would they do that? Oh my god! So guys like that, their game plan is let's buy <coughs> agricultural water rights, and then let's work on changing the law, so that it could be transferred to cities. And then mm-hmm. we can make money on the sale. That's actually so. They're real life super villains controlling the water in the They'll Western United States. They'll put it United that they're States. trying to make the use of water more efficient and move it from low value agriculture to high value urban uses. So, what's is the general opinion of these people amongst yeah. water experts <laughs> around the world? It's kind of a, this is a. I don't think people have thought about it that much. It's a growing. <laughs> uh, yeah, I get why not. That's a growing, kind of a. It's gro- the opportunities in that are gr- are growing, and people aren't aware of it all the time. Australia did something like that too. Oh, I'm sure they did. And actually on Aus- in Australia, you can buy, you can go online now <laughs> and you can buy water rights fr- uh, for the Murray-Darling yeah. Basin. Yeah, uh, we, I mean, we talked about this very, very briefly until I was shouted out to stop talking about it because <laughs> we're saving for the podcast. But Australia, you know, a famously <laughs> uh, drought-stricken country. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, in New South Wales, which I think I'm right in saying is the wealth state, but it's definitely like, <coughs> it's basically Sydney, for example, is our New York of Australia. Um, then one of their number one crops is rice. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know if anyone knows about rice, but rice is the most thirsty crop on the When you planet. read about water, you yeah. read a ton about rice. Yeah. Like and rice so is it's a just huge like, deal in the water world. Yeah. Like cotton's bad, rice is worse. And it's just. <laughs> Like it, it defies, no one's ever said that before. Yeah. <laughs> it defies all logic, but then you know, there's money to be made, and so fuck it. Like, as far as I studied rice when I was at school, like I went out and saw the rice fields. That's why I re- know these random facts. But like, 
no one ever that I've ever spoken to can give me a rational reason why the Australian government would continue to use such a scarce resource that, you know, let's think about it. If the, if the water's not there, if the water's there, it's not in the rest of the country, which is drought stricken, or the rest of the state, you know, and therefore there's a strong business case to say if it's not in the rest of the state, then the other farms and produce and everything else is suffering and therefore mm -hmm. the country's taking a huge economic hit. So I don't know why. It's just fascinating. Yeah, man. That's my rant over. <laughs> Well, I didn't know any of that, so yeah. <laughs> thank you. Um, Mark, did you want to say yeah. something about that? Uh, I was trying to remember my numbers, but the U.S. used to be, I think, the third largest rice exporter. And a big chunk of that was coming out of California. It's the same kind of story. Yeah. But the question you have to ask is, okay, is it, is it so high value that it's worth the water that you're putting into it yeah. or not? <laughs> but here's the key point, and Jack wants to go on, but here's the key point, right? And you said earlier that I came up with this really specific random fact about nuts <laughs> in California. <laughs> but like, at the end of the day, like everyone, like there is a lot of rhetoric out there about the significance and importance of water. But the reality is that the business model of day-to-day -day people and basically putting food on the, pla on the plate for the family supersedes all. And the context of that fact is that the problem they've got in uh, California is that uh, basically China's upper class, middle upper class and upper class discovered nuts as a basically a delicacy that if you put it out at a dinner party, it's a way you separate yourself from the layman because you have nuts. And therefore, like red wine, they grant this huge demand for basically like uh, walnuts and bloody, not walnuts, pistachios almonds. and almonds. Yeah. yeah. And so Californian farmers, and by the way, nuts are like the thirst, one of a very thirsty crop. So Californian farmers, how do you know this? Like Californian farmers so research. I didn't come across ripped a single out. almond. Californian farmers ripped out like all the the other crops they used to uh, harvest and basically started planting nuts. And it's completely fucked the water tables because they're so thirsty and they don't have enough water as it is. But the reality is that their attitude is, well, I'm going to get as much money from exporting nuts to China as I can before the water runs out. Because if I don't do it, then the guy next to me is going to do it. And therefore, you know, and it comes down to you're an, you used to be an economist, professor. I did. What's that? Yeah. Um, what's that rule about common, common, common property? Yeah, common property. Um, Open well, access resources. Yeah, yeah. law of the commons. That's law, the of, the, yeah. law of the commons. Yeah. Basically, that so everyone tragedy fucks of it. The commons. Tragedy of the commons. That's yeah. the word I'm looking for. Yeah. <laughs> Econ 101. Yeah. You just <laughs> learned something. So um, the, there's something around. to what you just said, and the, the, everything you said is basically true. But the water was going to be used for something else as well. So we can debate: should the almonds be exported to China? or not, but the big issue there in the California case is we didn't realize that surface water and groundwater are the same water. They're just moving through the system at different levels. So we allocate all of our surface water. So there's 100 units in the river, we allocate that to everybody. And then we tell them you can pump all the groundwater you want yeah. as long as you put it to some beneficial use. But since the groundwater got there through the surface water, it means it's actually the same water. So we've double allocated. And so the people without the surface water rights can do the groundwater just like you said. And then when we try to change the system to get it back on track, everybody has already we've over allocated the system. I've got a farm. I bought the farm thinking I was going to get the water. So if you try to take the water right, I'm going to fight you naturally. And, and so you get a yeah. stock system. And this is the kind of political problem that it makes this so difficult to solve. That's something that I think is so crazy. And like I am, you know, have gone through all my life without having any idea what groundwater was. Oh, I was about to make the same point. Like, if like I, <laughs> growing up, if I turned the faucet on and water did not come out of the faucet, I would have, like, exploded because that's where the water comes from. There's there's this, like, uh, I, I, you, you were talking about it in class once uh, when I was definitely listening. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. That, where? Oh, brutal. No, really? <laughs> well, no, I, I remember box, this. Extra box. So, yeah. There well, there was, there's this book about someone who goes to another planet, or is it a movie? It, it, it's Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yeah, so yeah. this guy goes. This movie. guy goes to <laughs> another planet, and he he's like, imagine one of us going to like this planet of of basically if our we go to another Earth basically like five thousand years ago. Yeah, and we get there and like, oh my God, like you, I'm gonna be the best person <laughs> ever. <laughs> like you guys have no idea. Like we have TVs. Like like you guys are. I'm gonna show you everything, but like we actually wouldn't be able to do anything because we wouldn't even be able to like build or like build a farm or, or do oh, anything oh, like useful. Like me and you. Like people yeah. like us. Yeah. yeah. 
we have no idea. <laughs> we don't even know about groundwater and all this stuff. Yeah. Like literally. So I, one of the things is uh, when we were talking shortly before this, I, I said, you know, if, if you were that guy and you went to another planet, I mean, you you like won the World Water Award or, or like you <laughs> Which, and your administration. Which first of all, what what is that? I read a little bit about the Geneva Stockholm. Stockholm, and it's the oh dang it, that I place too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one job, Stockholm. Jack. One yeah. job. <laughs> get your facts wrong. wrong. Well, wait, 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 wait. Before we get into that, I I said you know if you if you you're like the water guy. If if we had one water guy to, from Earth to send, like we would send. No, no, not me. W- really? Who you'd that? be up there. No, you want to send to an engineer. But I said, oh, okay, so, so what, what would you start with doing? You know, would you build a well? And he's like, well, I'd have to know, like, where to build it. And I was like, like you have to know where to build a well. Not, just like, <laughs> not even just, like, how to build a well. You have to know, like, where the ground. <laughs> yeah, you have to know where the groundwater will be. You can't just build a well anywhere. I mean, I figured that much out for myself. Yeah, yeah. well, I knew that, too. But like, yeah. I, I get your that. point, but I'm a little concerned because I think I think most of us at this point, at this age, would know that you need to, like, know where to build yeah. a well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, you watch, like, Bear besides Grylls? that. Yeah. Bear Grylls, man, always looking for water. He's always talking about where you find yeah. water. On, <laughs> on the surface. No, he but digs. anyway, he digs. He digs, yeah. he digs man. He digs. <laughs> I haven't <laughs> seen that episode. <laughs> um, but I was, I was wondering, like, if you were to describe – like what groundwater is to, or like how that works to someone like me who, or anyone that out yeah, there that doesn't understand groundwater, how would you describe it? Like you said, it's sort of, so you think if you go to the beach and you're inland a little bit from where the water is <coughs> and you dig, you'll find water, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Okay, dig a hole. So that's yeah. groundwater. Okay. It's the most relatable if example if ever if on yeah. the show. And then if you take a glass of water at the same beach and you pour it, It'll sink into the sand and join that water that you could have. Yeah. Okay. The same thing happens inland. So either it rains or or waters in a river and it actually is sort of leaking into the ground and goes underground and it's basically flowing underground. And you can dig down and you can find it. Yeah. But the interesting thing is there's way more groundwater than surface water, number one. And then number two, on the surface, the river flows pretty fast. Underground, it's pretty slow. Which mm. means, Ooh. if the river dries up, if it doesn't rain this year, there's still groundwater. Yeah. Right. So it's like a bank. So if you don't overuse the groundwater, like we're talking about in California, then when there's a drought, you can use the groundwater, keep your almond trees <laughs> growing. Or but if you draw down the bank in a good year, then you're screwed in the bad year. Yeah. So, so we're screwing ourselves. So you were talking about how there's tons of water under the Sahara Desert, which I blew my mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, like water's no business being there. It's supposed to be like the biggest. Yeah, desert. you tell that water, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> you tell that water. Get out. <laughs> yeah, but so does it necessarily correlate to? I mean, because no, that's, that's a from a different climate. That area used to have water on the top of it. Yeah. I've heard that. It used to be a lake. Wow. Is that I've heard desert? this. Yeah. Well, not that's yeah. not why it's desert, but it used to be. There's. There yeah. u- it used to be a totally different rainfall regime. That was hippos out there. And if you look, there's some rock art, old like. Yeah. Old rock art yeah. that has hippos, giraffes, whatever, out in the middle of the sand. There, there's, there's, a, there's a theory that uh, I think 10 to 12,000 years ago, there was a massive f- like um, cataclysmic event where there was a ton of well, just everything that like changed the climate of areas. And, and there was flooding across all of the Americas, all this stuff. And I, I, don't kn- I, I heard this a while ago. I don't, I don't know where it is right now. But there's a conspiracy out there because um, we love conspiracies. Yeah, the <laughs> the Sphinx in Egypt oh my God. has go. has water erosion marks at its base, and there hasn't been water, or there hasn't been like a ton of water flowing or, or a ton of rain in Egypt for since that amount of time, which would date the Sphinx's creation be before. How we have it marked. Ooh. Yeah, I was wondering. Not that you would know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> more about that. He's over here, like, come it's on. Not, like, <laughs> it's not that far from the Nile, the Sphinx, and the Nile floods, or it used to flood before we built dams. Could have been that too. Well, there you That's go. That's a very rational explanation. Yeah. Solved. <laughs> Solved. Yeah, I was to a, a three-hour thing of all this stuff, yeah. and there you go. But I don't know anything. That's about why that. you bring in a water expert to <laughs> talk about it. Um, so we're almost out of time, but I th- one question I really want to get to before. Uh, we're done is so 
obviously water pollution and just pollution in general is a huge problem. And I think people don't take that for granted because the water that comes out of our tap is still going to be clean. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I mean, at what point will, you know, the water pollution we have s- start to affect us or is our air pollution or just in general? I guess it already does. In no, a big I think way. on water, the issue is if, if you have the money, we have the technology, if you have the money to invest in it, you can get clean water without much of a problem. You don't want to dump. It's a problem when if, a f- if factories are dumping heavy metals. Mm-hmm. Ca- so I don't know if you know, the, uh, there was a river in Ohio that caught on fire. Yeah, I yes. heard about this. It's nuts. Yeah. And that was kind of the start of the environmental movement in the U.S. Yeah. When yeah. people said rivers shouldn't burn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 60. Yeah. 60 70. Yeah. yeah. Because rivers shouldn't Net burn. Yeah. Let's just clarify you know, that. And, and so after that, there's a lot of effort in the Clean Water Act and to you know, realize you shouldn't. We used to think you just dump it in a river and it goes away. That must be this. So the solution for all pollution problems is dump it in the river because it goes out. And we realize you can't do that. And so you. We figured out here how to do a better job of managing mm-hmm. the pollution. That's not quite the same as cleaning the drinking water, but yeah. these things are all possible. You just have to make wise choices about mm-hmm. it. Wait, there's a lot more I want to get to. Like, first of all, <laughs> like, how is Flint, Michigan? How does how do they not have clean water? Because for I mean, I'm I mean I'm very fortunate in that I've never had to worry about turning on a faucet and just like seeing water that could kill me. Yeah. So is is that I mean. It's Michigan. Like, that's... Yeah. So it's such well, a... Are they yeah. next to a big fresh water lake? Well, but what happened was the, the pipes have uh, corrosion in them. It's okay. So if you can have a lead pipe, we don't like lead pipes, but lead pipes are okay once there's corrosion inside of them because the lead doesn't leach out. And what happened in that case is when the water was changed, it had a different pH, and it basically ate the corrosion off. And then the bad stuff started coming off of the pipes. Oh, my gosh. Uh, and so it was not understanding that that was happening. And even in D.C., there was a case where they were going to change the chemicals to protect the environment, to not put chlorine in and use something else. And they changed it. And that change caused the same problem, but D.C. was on top of it much better and realized really? what was happening. Changed the, changed the chemical back. <laughs> Go, D.C. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> crazy. Well, wait, so, they sh- so that's ironic. So they changed the chemicals to help the environment. And and not not understanding everything. there was a... Another a side a second effect order effect. That, yeah. yeah, interesting. That is so and, nice. And, and just that really is crazy. So it wasn't That's the water so quality nuts. itself. It was yeah. what was happening in the pipe, the type of the water, then what was how that was interacting with the pipe, and wow. then that then wasn't recognized wow. and treated. There, there's another thing I want to talk about, which is oh, I've got so many things I want to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> well, it could go on for hours, but in in one of our classes, we talked about um, uh, you you just seem incredibly knowledgeable on like problems happening like w- water scarcity problems happening between countries in um I, I mean like everywhere basically and all all the different ways that they were trying to fix it um from water pumps that you could do manually or like drip drip water the that one blew my mind of where they they got this area and you please give many more details than I am giving, but they got, they basically put in place a system that made their water use more efficient, Mm -hmm. but it, it turned out for the worse. Yeah. It turned out using more water because suddenly you have this. So where, where was that? That's like the worst outcome possible. (laughs) Like that's actually worst case scenario. And And the thing was, this was an area that really needed to save their water. So like, so you're putting in place this thing and then it turns out everyone's using more water. It's like, shit. No. So (laughs) the the bigger point was that if you don't understand how the water actually works in the surface water and groundwater or how the water and the pipes work, you can screw stuff up. Like, so it's not, you have to have some knowledgeable water hydrologist or whoever working on this that understand it. But in that case, what was happening is they d- didn't understand that this wasted water was actually going into the groundwater and the farmers were then using that groundwater. So when they tried to reduce the waste on the surface, they were actually just reducing what was going into the groundwater oh that was already being used. Yeah. So that was a n- it was a net zero, except that having better <laughs> access to this equipment encouraged people to use even more. So wow. this And then they th- kept taking groundwater and then they like depleted their groundwater because <laughs> it wasn't being replaced. This might be a stupid question, but 
And what? Wait, what country? What? Wh where was that? Well, the, that example was was Pakistan, but we do. It's we've had this exact same thing happen in the U.S. Wow. Uh, it, uh, all over. And so it was repeated. The pro the it, like we made the same mistake again in Pakistan. Yes, and and just this week since. We're talking Australia a little bit as yeah. well. There was an article <laughs> in Science about how Australia did exactly the same thing. <laughs> oh, of course, it's <laughs> <is>. really funny. <laughs> yeah. So, good, good question. And it's like this kind of gets to like the core of what Soul as a podcast stands for is and believes in is that like water sounds like, and I might be wrong, like a pretty finite thing. Like it's, it's a pretty understood concept. There's a science to it. Mm -hmm. How do adults who are supposed to be professionals who are dealing with a relatively, you know, understood science who are paid a lot of money to go solve one of these problems, how do they keep fucking it up? I think part of it is that even though some people know how it all works, most individuals don't. And then if your issue is this is my farm, then I'm interested in what I'm going to do on my farm. I'm not thinking about how my farm's effect is part of this larger system. Like I was saying, like whose water is it? Is it mine after I pee it yeah. out, or is it yours? Yeah. So I'm worried about my part for my problems, and you're worried about your part for your problems. And then we don't. You have to because it's this really complicated resource that moves around and changes form from surface water to groundwater and evaporates and comes back down again, and it crosses a state boundary or an international boundary. You have to bring all that together. And it, and, That's and, crazy. And when we haven't even thought about how we're going to use it before we started using it. And now I already have my position. You're not taking my water. Yeah. And yeah. you say, I'm not you're not taking my water. And so we all think it's our water. And now we have to figure oh, out yeah. how to Water ethics, man. This was the craziest one. So if you're trying to... <laughs> what I would said, I have Jack's enemy right now? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, this is what <laughs> people want to listen to. I, I'm completely happy. Uh, <laughs> when we were talking... Er, we, Mark and I had a 20 minute conversation um, in and in that basically the point of that conversation was to see uh, if he would be if he, really if you knew anyone that would be good to bring on for our water podcast. And then he was like, actually, it's definitely me. Like, I'm the only one that knows so much about water here. In the I, I, I won. Flat my own feathers, I, you're looking at him. Yeah. In 2012, I was the water guy. Like, um, but anyway, we're, we, I said, um, since gr you know, like grain and crops, obviously, very intuitively take so much water, is eating meat better? Because I don't know. Well, just off off that first thought, yeah, like yeah, you're just exactly, going. yeah. But it turns out you've just you've just made an enemy out of every vegan on the planet yeah. right now. But well, go yeah, <laughs> he's gonna no, it'd be, be way their worse. Whole it takes role so model. much grain to grow. It takes <clears throat> ten pounds of grain to make a pound of beef, right? So. Yeah. So oh man! All that water. Oh Jesus, no! Jesus gave He's got all the numbers. numbers. They no, shit. He does have all the numbers. <laughs> Roll yeah. through it. Yeah. No, so that thousand liters of water that took to make a kilo of grain. Now you have to feed ten kilos of grain to the cow to get a kilo of beef. So now it's ten thousand liters of water Holy to get moly. one kilo of, of beef. So your quarter pounder is mm. like a block of water as high as this room. And but that quarter pound is oh, good. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, actually, does it actually turn out to be that? Like one patty, one burger it's patty takes like... It's, I, don't, I, I can't remember. Off the, uh, hundreds of gallons. No, it's crazy. So <laughs> one of the craziest things I found in this entire... Are you thing, kidding? And we actually do have to wrap up soon. We could, talk, like, we could talk to Professor Giordano for hours. But one of the craziest things I found is leaky faucets. So leaky faucets <laughs> in the United States... Waste one trillion gallons of water a year. And but is that waste? Because it just goes back into the system. Yeah, yeah no, go, go, go. Uh, no, it might be or might not be exactly. Yeah, <laughs> which is science. Well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, didn't know that. But, but, what, uh, <laughs> but, but, but one other thing, though, whether or not the water is going back in the system and you can reuse it, to treat it, to chemicals, to pump it out of the river, get out of the river, it took a lot of energy because it's this yeah. super heavy stuff. So just because it might not even be that much water, yeah. you're still wasting all sorts of resources if you just yeah. leave the tap on. So is that what people mean in terms of like saving water and it correlating to like saving the planet? Is that what that means? Because it That's I don't what they think it means, but yeah. that's not what it means. I don't think people know. No, I, I think people no, saying I don't that don't actually really, know. I don't really know. But I think you're saving 
in a different way. You, yeah. Y yeah, you're not typically you're not actually saving any water. <laughs> well, if you if you turn the shower, if you take a quick shower, like the longer shower, the water is going to go down the drain. It's going to go back in the river. It may be in a less clean form, but it's going back in the river. Let's answer this question very, very simply. In your house, yeah. if there's a leaky faucet or you have a too long a shower or you leave the tap running while you're doing the dishes, yeah. do you feel guilty? I do. Well, because it's Ooh. taking Whoa, what? money. Hey, oh. <laughs> I don't know, be the opposite. Not, no, not for the water reason, for the other reasons. Cause you gotta money? The, the, or the, the money. The, the energy, the, no, I mean the energy that's going into moving this water around. And when it goes out of your tap into the sewer to Blue Plains, like they're pumping it around. It has to go through all sorts of cleaning processes. DC water, the water supply for DC, is the single largest consumer of electricity in DC. Oh, Ooh. so it's saving energy as in yeah, so like yeah. coal yeah. power. Yeah, yeah. it's like the right. government's expenditures. Well, that's crazy. Also, shout out Blue Plains, right? Because so, yeah, yeah, they're crazy. We, we tried to take a tour there. They were not the they, most helpful. They are. <laughs> we understand no. why. It's really. Yeah. This is actually something that Steer and I were talking about. Straight from about, like a Batman movie. Yeah. <laughs> you don't. You never think about this. But a ma like water terrorism. If they <laughs> poison oh, yeah. the water supply, like you know how many people they kill? Yeah, absolutely. Or yeah. If you, if you blow up B Blue Plains wastewater treatment and there's no more sewage treatment in D.C., you got a problem. Literally everything. Really the gone. grossest problem. Shit would literally <laughs> hit the fan. It would literally <laughs> it would hit everything. Like we would be, it, that was such a bad joke. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I yeah. Mean, like, I got, I got one more question. Okay, yeah. yeah. One more question <laughs> we, from you two, and then we'll We haven't up. hit yet. You touched on it. We didn't get to it. We haven't hit yet water on Mars. Boom. Oh, uh, I don't know anything about water on Mars. <laughs> have you seen I the told movie? him Probably that. Like don't don't be mad at me. I, I told him that. <laughs> have you seen the movie The Martian? I have. Matt Damon. Yeah, I have. Did you watch that and go water cool, <laughs> or did you go bullshit? I watched it on an airplane. It was okay. <laughs> 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 the scene where he grows stuff using water through condensation. No, that's okay. It's probably not, like makes probably not enough, but yeah. A concept. Right. It's a movie. It's a movie. I'm not fulfilled, but yeah. That's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Robert, Robert. <laughs> this is, yeah. I mean, oh my gosh, that's so crazy. I, I think. Got one question. What, got one question. Well, one thing I, I'd like you guys to know is just to further understand like how how like difficult it is to move water mm -hmm. is um what it so i mentioned one of the reasons that blue blue plains water does not uh like filter do their filtration system one more step to make it drinking water is because people can't get over the, the idea that it's like yeah straight from sewage You're drinking but poop water yeah the bigger reason and another reason is um because of transportation. And so can you explain how that, how, how it like goes down the, I, yeah. I thought that was really cool. So any city that's getting water out of a river, you take it out upstream in the city because it's higher up. And then you can use gravity mostly to move it through the water filter plant and then into the houses. And then you use your toilet, it goes back in the sewer and then the wastewater treatment plant's gonna be further downstream, so it can just go with gravity. That's so cool. So it just keeps that's going so down. Cool. But yeah. if you clean the water in Blue Plains wastewater treatment plant that's now downhill, and you wanted to use it again, and you have to pump it uphill, and spend all that energy cost to move yeah. the water People back are so again. smart, man. So they don't do that. <laughs> so they People don't are do so smart. So that's a reason you would not, you'd want to think twice So they put it back it. into the Potomac, and the Blue, Blue Plains water, fil the filtered water, we don't see ever yeah. again. It just goes it down the stream. And then a new filtration system down the stream. It's like almost like yeah. pretty so, basic. So, 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 and so, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> when, it com when it comes to town planning, when it comes to town planning, we plan the water filtration system for the next town. In a sense, yeah. What? Oh, that's, cool. I mean, that's that's a that's a side <laughs> of like community that most people don't know about. Yeah. Well, I mean, I would venture to say almost all people don't know about. <laughs> <it>. <laughs> who, who knows about yeah. that? Wait. Uh, that's nuts. No, but here, there, I don't think there's anyone downstream from us. The Chesapeake is. I don't think so. We're just, we just take us. We just, just take us here in DC. We're just sticking it back in the Chesapeake Bay. Um, I. This was an absolute blast. We yeah. talked about everything from agriculture to Mars to everything. And the Sphinx got brought up for a while. There. <laughs> I don't know. Every, um, thank what you so twist? much, Professor Giordano, no, for welcome. being yeah, on. Thank you for, for coming on. Some of your time. Yeah. Um, I've learned so much. Yeah. What have you learned? Final notes. One last comment from each person. What have you learned, Jack? Or what do you find most interesting? 
first of all, I, I thought I knew a lot about water, read a lot of uh, articles and data and stuff, and thought I was hot shot water guy coming in here. And I mean, just the, the way in which water is recycled is so much different than I thought it was. I mean, it makes me feel good that he feels bad. Uh, if you just left your shower <laughs> running all day, because if, yeah. if he had said the other, the opposite of that, <laughs> my mind would have actually been blown. Um, but a lot, of, I don't know. I, I learned a ton. You're, you're lost for words. Yeah, I can't pick any one thing. There's out. so many. Yeah. Oh, you, Rob? Um, my thing is definitely that. Yeah, I thought people are always like, "Oh my gosh, turn your faucet off." Like we have a water issue, but in reality, the biggest like water waste. Uh, area is through agriculture. Like, yeah, it's that's, huge. that's the area where we have the biggest opportunities for gain. Yeah, yeah. Uh, true. But well put. That like it's only <laughs> so it's only this small fra. I yeah. I didn't even yeah. think about how much agriculture can actually take mm-hmm. of our water. Prob- probably the water it took to grow the barley that's in this was way more than the water that's in the can. Yeah. That makes wow. Sense. But still, like that. If you put a price ah. on that, that's insane. Yeah. Okay, Sam. Uh, for me, I'm excited to learn <laughs> that, like, the amount of water stays constant. It's <laughs> just a matter of where that yeah, water true. is when. That's actually the issue. The win is crazy. Because <laughs> that is <laughs> yeah. Yeah. like, yeah. where the water is. <laughs> that gives me hope because that means it is a, like, defined problem that can be mm. solved with will and yeah. money. Yeah. Allocated yeah. resource allocated to fix it, right? Yeah. Um, so that gives me hope. It's not as if like the land's going to become so arid that like we literally have to go to Mars, where even the number one water experts <laughs> like I don't know, man, it's a <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, so that, that's my takeaway. That's my takeaway. No. So do you have, do you have I, any final comments? No, I just always say short because they're all a the whole bunch of problems. And they're all difficult to solve because it involves so many different people and the water is complicated. But so I, I'm saying short term, I'm a pessimist and long term, I'm an optimist because there are all sorts of solutions, too. Oh, well, that's a great. Note I will say on. just to, to inspire some curiosity from our listeners, if anyone is curious about learning a little bit more about this, I would suggest because uh, I think this was crazy. I learned that as of now, there's over 17 different types of ice. <laughs> That can that can happen, and or be present. So you're just lofting this one and out there for the listeners. Yeah, <laughs> and <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> only one type of ice is present on Earth. Like Earth only has one type of ice. So space so ice. So space <laughs> has like in different planetary systems and galaxies, there can be like many more different types of ice, which just blows your mind because you've only known one type of ice ever. So if you feel like yeah, check out up the ice. More, <laughs> more, more Thanks, water. <laughs> it doesn't come in only one form. Yeah. Well, thank you everybody for listening. Thank you, Professor Giordano, and Thanks, my man. lovely other co-hosts. It's been a great episode. Have a great day. Thank you for listening. <laughs>